The Department of Justice has charged an Iranian man with plotting to murder former Trump national security adviser John Bolton in the U.S. last year. A member of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, believed to be in Tehran, is accused of offering $300,000 to a U.S. individual to kill Ambassador Bolton in retaliation for the Trump administration's assassination of longtime Iranian military leader Qasem Soleimani. He was not aware that the person he was dealing with was an FBI informant. And we should point out that John Bolton was out of the government at the time of that Soleimani uh, assassination by the U.S. in Baghdad in 2020. In addition to Bolton, the Iranians have also, our reporting, is uh, plotted to kill four other former top Trump officials who dealt with Iran. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Secretary of Defense Mark Esper, former U.S.-Iran negotiator Brian Hook, and Bolton's successor as National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, a person familiar telling NBC News. John Bolton joins me now. Well, Ambassador Bolton, former National Security Advisor, we're very glad you're here. So and, am I. And safely <laughs> here. Uh, let's talk about this plot. When were you first aware of it? Well, I was told by the FBI in uh, spring, roughly 2020, uh, through the FBI's duty to warn procedure, uh, which is for Americans threatened by uh, foreign governments or foreign sources. And I received a series of these duty to warn uh, notices going through 2020 into 2021 until uh, close to Thanksgiving in 2021 at a meeting at the FBI headquarters, a large meeting, I might say, where they told me just how serious it was. And that's when I suggested that uh, perhaps since this stemmed from my days in the government, they might want to consider getting the Secret Service involved. So I've certainly been aware of the general outlines of it for a long time, but I'd not seen the charging document that was unsealed Tuesday, and uh, many of the details in it were new to me. And when you left as National Security Advisor up until that time, you in the fall of 2020, as I remember. 2019. 20, 2019, excuse me. You had security. You had Secret Service protection as the National Security Advisor and for all of the things that you were dealing with. And normally, when you leave the government at that level, you retain security for some time afterwards. What happened in your case? Well, the day I resigned, uh, President Trump cut off my Secret Service. In fact, within hours after I submitted my letter, they were pulling the bells and whistles off my house and, and so on. But Is that uh, normal? No, it's not normal. Well, it's normal for Donald Trump, but not normal for, for the institution. And so you didn't have security all that time, all these many, those many months. Right. But, when you but, knew that there were threats, you had FBI telling you there were credible threats. Well, they were telling me in general terms that the duty to warn process is, uh, is, is sometimes general. And uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't consider doing anything because I didn't hear them telling me anything that wasn't, uh, that wasn't sort of goes with the territory material uh, up until the end when I, when I did suggest maybe they ought to call the Secret Service, which they did, and the question was put to President Biden, and he authorized it, for which I'm grateful. And this complaint, as I read it, had an Iranian member of the National Guard, believed to be a member of the Quds Force, uh, so at the top levels of you know, that, their military organization, uh, working online, finding someone, and then offering a third person who ended up being an FBI informant. $300,000 to kill you, and to do it at home or in the office, in a parking garage. At one point, according to the charging document, you actually helped the FBI by uh, letting them photograph you, letting this supposed assassin, you know, or his accomplice photograph you so that he would have the proof that he was on the job to keep the plot going so that they could end up Right. This charge. Right. I, I wasn't looking for a starring role, but I thought I could help out and uh, was happy to do it. So tell me how that how did that go down? Well, I think, uh, as you say, this this was something that enabled the the uh, the the, the uh, Kuds force person to be strung along a little bit further. And uh, there was never any certainty this was the only threat. Uh, uh, so there was still a lot to learn. And uh, that, that's why I think actually the filing of this launching this criminal proceeding, in my case, and the unsealing of it is very important because I think it helps give the American public a, a greater sense of just exactly what this regime in Tehran is capable of doing. 
the, the other people who may be threatened, and I, I won't get into specifics of who they are, but, but you're, you're getting close uh, up on the screen there, uh, uh, I'm sure they're accumulating evidence in the same way. But, but this, is, this is the nature of the regime in Iran, and it's not just on uh, threatening terrorist acts, killing Americans on American soil. It's their general pattern of deception and dishonesty that characterizes essentially everything they do. The foreign ministry, of course, uh, last night said that this was baseless, baseless accusations. Your response to that? Yeah. Look, this, this, the, the, what, what, what happened on Tuesday was the launching of a criminal proceeding in the United States through a criminal complaint, the uh, presentation of this to a federal court, obtaining a search warrant, which I assume goes off to Interpol, for the arrest of uh, poor Savi. Uh, and, and it is the beginning of a process that in the minds of uh, people at the Justice Department could lead to a criminal prosecution uh, un under which the department would have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt every element of the charges they bring. So this is very serious for the U.S. government to do this. And what they've got so far is enough to convince them they could prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. There was also the report in the charging document that the same person offered a million dollars for another high-ranking official who, uh, those familiar tell me, is Mike Pompeo. Right. I, I don't know that myself, but I did read with interest that, uh, that the confidential human source asked Porsavi if there was anybody else they wanted to go after, and he said yes, apparently naming Mike Pompeo, and he said, but he's surrounded by security, so worry about him later. Worry about him later. And the fact is that Iran and the U.S. are in the closing days, we are told, possibly of reviving the nuclear deal that was uh, canceled under your watch, uh, President Trump's watch. Uh, at this time, we're told that uh, Tehran is making that critical decision because negotiators, U.S., Iranian, European negotiators, have agreed on the final draft of this, and it's now up to the political leadership in, in Iran. This, of course, could blow that up. Well, I think, I, I think going back into this deal is delusional. Uh, I think the original deal was bad. Uh, Iran should never have been permitted to enrich uranium at all. It's not trustworthy enough to do that. Uh, the deal has not gotten any better with age. The United States has literally been on its knees in Vienna, begging to get back in, making one concession after another. Uh, I, I think it endangers American security to go back into this deal. The White House has it compartmented. They say, over here is the good negotiations on the Iran nuclear deal. Over here, here is the bad terrorism sort of thing. The minds of the leadership in Iran are not compartmentalized. These are instruments of Iranian power to use against the great Satan. Uh, their commitments are not worth the paper they're printed on. Uh, I think our friends and allies, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, and others in the region know what the Iranian threat is, and the terrorism and the nuclear are just two sides of the same coin. Well, there are others. I interviewed David Petraeus yesterday who said, you know, as bad as all of these other threats are from Iran, we were safer with the nuclear deal than not. But I just want to ask you about something else, because I was told that one of the last issues, which we know publicly, one of the last issues was whether to lift the terror designation that was imposed by the Trump administration on Iran, which, or on the Revolutionary Guard, the exact group that was out to get you, according to these charging documents, and that there was a counter offer from the U.S. side to lift that designation if they would cancel all of these death plots against former U.S. officials. Right. That is the same mentality that says we're better off having the deal. The fact is the deal itself is so inherently flawed, puts Iran so close to a nuclear capability that it gave them all they wanted, even if they complied with the deal, which they did not. But they've said, we're not going to go after nuclear weapons. That, com that commitment is worth just about as much as a commitment that says, we'll stop uh, trying to commit uh, murder against American citizens on American soil. This regime in Tehran will say anything to achieve its objectives, whether it's on the nuclear side of the terrorist side. They're not dishonest about terrorism, but honest about the nuclear issue. And anybody who, who thinks that we're going to advance American interest by agreeing with that regime, I think is actually uh, putting those interests at great risk. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, you, you consider yourself safe now? Uh, look, in the hands of the Secret Service, if I'm not, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. How has it affected your life? 
Well, it's much like when I was in the White House and uh, you, you, you learn to live with it. The one, one thing I can say for certain, they're, they're not going to silence me because of it. And uh, I hope people really have a chance to understand the nature of this threat more fully. We'll tell them the nature of the regime we're dealing with. Thank you very much. Thanks for Thanks having for me. Thanks for being with us.